Jenny, you have stayed inside your house for a long time recently, haven't you? Good morning, Patty. Recently, my company has been pushing for us to work from home, and so for a while now I've been working from within our office in the house. However, I'm still going into the office a few times every month for meetings and special projects. Is that so? So the company you're working for has started to implement a system such as that for all its employees? Well, if that's the case, then you get out of my son's house right now. Huh? And by saying that, of course what I mean by that is I want you to divorce my son and leave. Um, how does me working remotely for my job happen to lead into you wanting me to leave your son? Well, Jenny, the way that leads into you leaving my son is that I know about how you use that excuse of working remotely as a way to never get any of the chores there done. Um, well, the only thing that's changed is that I'm working from my office here at home, but everything besides that has been the same since I've been married to your son. And I bet the only reason they're having you work from home now is because they have no further use for you, and it'll only be a matter of time before they fire you, right? I mean, I don't blame them considering you were raised in a foster home all your life. How could a parentless child like you amount to anything in that company? Patty, I think it's better that you refrain from talking about me like that from now on. Excuse me? I'm sure that there are people who were raised in foster homes that had a hard time living in this world after being forced out into society. But there are also people like my older friend that I grew up with in that foster home who is now the CEO of a $15 million company. And I also have friends from that foster home who are not lawyers and doctors. And most of them even have a happy family now, with a loving wife or husband and children around them. So, please stop trying to say that all foster kids have ended up troubled and without any use to this world. Right now, I'm not talking about all those other idiots. I'm talking about you, Jenny, and how within the company you are working for, you are the least dependable and will soon be fired because of it. And unfortunately, you found some way to get my son to marry you, and he's now stuck with someone who slacks off from their most important duties. I'm sure that you only married him for his family's money, right? I really would love to have you divorced from him sooner rather than later. Um, I'd like to get back to my work here soon, so... But I'll have to wait a little longer for that, I'm sure. At least do this one thing for me by the end of today. That's leaving my son's house. And then from there, I'd like you to start working on divorcing him and being gone from his life forever. My son is my only boy in the family, and I need to make sure that he marries someone far more amazing than you. So, you need to get lost soon. I'm getting back to work. Goodbye. Ginny, are you home right now? You should be home working all day today, right? Oh, I'm still at home getting some work done, George. But I'm on a small lunch break now, so we can chat for a little while. Is that so? Well, I wanted to ask, if I came back home now, would I be bothering you while you work? Hmm? What's happened? Do you have to leave work early? Did you come down with something today that's forcing you to leave work? W wait this isn't about me coming down with anything today. My manager came up to me today saying that I haven't been using a lot of my time off this year and that it would benefit both me and the company to use it up before the next year begins. And since starting next week, I have more projects that I need to start. We both agreed that today I could use the afternoon off, fully paid to head home early and <laughs> use up the time off. I'll be getting tomorrow off as well, fully paid. <laughs> Is that so? Well, I'm fine with you coming home now, so don't worry about me and get your butt home. <laughs> All right, thank you. What do you want to do about lunch? I was just thinking that I'd buy something on the way home to eat. I'd like you to continue working on your work without having to get up to make me anything. All right. By the way, did my mom end up saying anything to you today? Huh? I'm talking about how she always seems to pick on you. Ah, uh, right. Today she seemed to be in even more of a fighting mood than times before. She really never seems to care enough when I tell her to stop messing with you, and, and that was probably getting in the way of you getting work done. I'm sorry, Jenny. She has to realize that what she's doing to you is not acceptable, right? You don't have to apologize for her actions. And besides, I'm doing alright after our little chat today. But even still, it's getting close to three months now. There's no denying that she's causing you a lot of stress by messing with you all the time, and that it's only getting worse as time goes on, right? I'm fine. Well, that's what I'd like to say, but really, 
her treating me so poorly has started to cause some issues with me and my job. At this point, we've really got to start thinking of a way to get her out of your hair for good. Ah, my bus is here. When I get home today, make sure to show me all the texts my mom sent to you. Sure, will do. If I'm able to change transfer buses quick enough at the station, I should be home in about an hour. Okay. Have a safe return home today. I'll do my best. See you this afternoon, then. You freaking useless dog. I just passed by your house a couple of seconds ago, and I saw that you're still sitting in there on your computer. I could have sworn that I told you earlier today to get the hell out of that house, right? Um, I'm in the middle of work right now. Your company is getting ready to fire you, so you have no reason to talk to me about getting any actual work done. And I know for a fact that you're only using that title of being a remote worker as a way to slack off. Seriously, you are a freaking waste of my son's time. Not only do you have zero common sense, but you can't even do your job well enough to stay within that mediocre company. George has been saying to me that I need to treat you with the respect he thinks you deserve, but I'm not buying it. All you've done is brainwashed him into thinking that you're worth something, and that's how you got him to marry you. Well, it's not going to happen any longer. Divorce my son right now. Patty, I've noticed you always happen to text me around this time every weekday, right? And so what? Could this mean that you choose to talk to me only during this time every day because you expect that your son is at work and can't do anything to stop you? Well, you might be onto something there. Actually, you are 100% correct about that. But this is all for the sake of my son. I have to protect him from you, and that means waiting for him to be busy with his work to start my plans of attack and making sure you go away. Having to think that such a useless dog is my son's wife. I am not the kind of mother that is going to let you continue taking advantage of my son all in order to get my family's money. Are you finished saying everything you've wanted to tell me? Oh, I have so much more that I'd like to say to you. I'm going to keep tearing into you until you leave my son and run away from me. So you're going to continue with this even though your son is sitting right next to me now? Huh? This all happened just a little bit ago, but he was allowed to take the rest of today, and tomorrow, off from work. And he only arrived home just a few minutes ago. So you're telling me that George is there with you right now? Yep. And he's sitting with you looking at all the things I've said to you? Yep. And I really need to end things here so that I can get back to my work. So from now on, you're going to have to go through him if you have anything else to say to me today. Now I'll be going. Well, if that's the case, then that's completely fine with me. Really, I didn't want for him to have to see everything I'd said to you today. But if he has seen everything already, then that makes my job of explaining things to him a whole lot smoother. Mom? George. Come on now. If you were finally going to take the chance to get a day off work, you should have come back home to me to hang out for a little while. I'm sure that it's pretty boring having to hang around that house all day with a useless dog like her, right? That's right. How about tonight you and I go out for some steaks? And I'll make sure to get us a reservation at one of those high-end steakhouses? It's been almost five years now since your father passed away, so it'll be nice to have a steak again since we haven't eaten steak together since that day. I'm sorry, Mom, but I'm not in the mood to go out for a steak tonight. I'm actually quite pissed at you. Huh? Stop trying to act like what you've been doing is okay. George, what's happened to you? When did I ever say that I wanted to get a divorce from Jenny? And the fact that you've been speaking so poorly of your own son's wife is good reason for me to want to punch you in the face right now. Did you actually think that I'd let you continue with that crap without stepping in? What are you talking about? Come on now. Talk about what's all going on right now very carefully. You are a graduate from a very highly sought after university. And you are on the path to becoming an elite in the working world. But unlike you, your wife right now is nothing more than a lost cause from a foster home who does nothing but work as an office lady. No matter how hard you try to make it look possible, the two of you are not meant to be married. Mom, did we not tell you this yet? Jenny is from the same university as I am. Huh? And not only that, but she was able to get into that university with the full ride scholarship. And as for what she does for work right now, Let's just say that the company isn't as well known as the one I'm working for, but her income is higher than mine. Huh? That useless dog. How the hell does she- 
You guys can't just hide things like that from me. Especially when it's been so long since you both got married and she became a part of my family. You can act like we were trying to hide this from you all you want. But her and I graduated in the same class. And we can show you proof that she's in fact better than me in some ways. Heck, I'd even be willing to show you our pay stubs. So you can see with your own very eyes that we aren't playing. Are you serious? You're telling me that that parentless foster child... We have told you plenty of times before that it's not okay to judge someone just based off their past life when they were a child. If you understand everything I've told you, I'd like for you to apologize to Jenny when she's done with work today. And it better come from your heart. Jenny? I'm assuming that you're finished with work by now? That's right. I just finished up and turned off my computer a second ago. I heard a lot of things from George earlier today, just after lunch. So you actually did end up graduating from university after all. And not just from any university, but from the same one as George? Why were you hiding all of that from me? What? All of that information would have been really helpful to me had you told me a lot sooner. Especially since without that very important piece of information, all you are is a useless foster child that is about to be fired from a company that has no use for her. I needed to know that you were a university graduate because that would have changed the way I spoke to you before. Did I not tell you all about my education back when I first met you in person? I explained that we met each other because we went to the same university together, and that's why we're together now. Huh? You mentioned that to me before? Well, I can see that even if you did know about that before, somewhere along the way you got confused and started to think differently about me. That's right. But even if you came from the same university as my son, there are still plenty of other things wrong with you. You still ended up growing up with no parents and in a foster home. So, to make up for you having that unfortunate part of your past haunting my family, I'd like for you to start paying me $1,000 every month. $1,000? If you are able to promise me that you'll send me $1,000 a month for the rest of my life, then I'll allow you to stay married to George. Really? I know about how you're making more money than my son is right now. Allow me to be frank about this. A woman that makes more than her husband is not viewed as a good thing in this world. But if I were to ask you to quit your job right now, George would keep coming after me, saying I'm bullying you or something, right? So to make it seem as though you're not making as much money as you say... I'd like you to pay me $1,000 a month, and I'll promise to leave you alone. What? However, in order for me to keep my end of the promise, you have to promise that you'll never tell my son about any of this deal we'll make. So if you'd like to continue to be the wife of my elite son, you listen to everything I've just said and do it. That should be okay with you, right? Mm hmm. Pick up the dang phone, Jenny. I've noticed that you still haven't put that $1,000 into my account. And so I came all the way to your place to tell you to your face to give me that money. But why is there a lock on the door and a sign saying the place is for sale? That's because after moving out of that house, the realtor has come to start cleaning the place up a bit more to start showcasing it to people looking into the place. You guys moved out? Why did you move? If you don't know what the reason is for that yet, try asking your son. Goodbye. George, why the hell did you move out of that place? You haven't even told me the new address that you guys have. That's because I've cut ties to you, Mom. Huh? Did I not tell you about a month ago to apologize to my wife when we last spoke about what you did to her? Because looking back into our text history, I did say that, and you replied to me meaning that you read that text. But for some unknown reason to me, you going to apologize to her turning into you threatening her to pay you $1,000 a month. Wait. Did that witch talk to you about all of that? I told her to keep her mouth shut about it so as part of the deal. Her not even being able to uphold that end of the promise is why foster children like her are useless. The reason why I know about what you said to her is because as she was texting you then, I was looking over her shoulder. Huh? And when she finished texting you, she turned to me and I told her that it was over. That from now on, her and I would no longer be a part of your family. That's... And I'll leave you with this as a warning. Trying to come and find us at our offices isn't going to be possible for you. I told my boss about the current situation, and he was kind enough to allow me to move to a different office away from you. 
And the same thing goes for Jenny and her job. Well, it's not like her office mattered to you, though, because you never even knew where she was working in the first place or what company she worked for. Wait, what am I going to do now, though? I don't care. What? For the past two years now, you've been getting Social Security, right? And you've been working part-time for a while now as well, right? There's also that money left over from Dad that you said you'd never touch after he passed away. Well, about that last part. So you should be all right then, right? Now, goodbye. Forever. Wait a moment, George. I am... Um, I quit that part-time job. <laughs> And as for all that money your dad left for me, I have used it all up. When talking about that last part, where Patty told her son that she had quit her job and was without any more money, that really surprised the both of us. Considering that after her husband passed, she should have been left with around $80,000 and still be receiving a decent social security. George and I just looked at each other after reading that and sighed. Apparently, she had spent all of that money without putting much thought into what to do after it was gone, besides hoping that she could rely on her son to support her. But when she found out how much I was making, decided that it'd be better to just have me pay her a little each month in return for not bullying me anymore. After both George and I had agreed that we'd cut ties with her and never see her again, we made sure to explain to all of his family before telling her. And since they all agreed that what we were doing was necessary, they told us that they'd figure out something for her since she no longer had enough money to support herself. In other words, that meant them all introducing her to a job working on a production line. So as of right now, she's out there working every day within that factory, making minimum wage that is barely enough to keep her in our house and keep all the lights on there. Thank you for watching and listening. We hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Also, feel free to leave a comment about what you thought of the story. We look forward to seeing you at the next story. I just finished work, Alice. I'm coming home now. How you feeling? Did you go to the hospital? Thanks for asking, John. I think I feel a bit better than this morning, but I've got a headache again this evening. Right. You still don't seem to be recovered. Are you okay? Feeling a little rough, but not too bad. My doctor saw me and gave me some medicine. So hopefully I'll feel better after this. Just try to get some rest. Thanks. I'm sorry I can't help out much with the housework. Don't you worry. It hasn't been too long since the birth. Why don't you take a break for a bit? But there's housework to keep on top of. So I don't want to be too idle. I need to take care of Sophie, too. If it gets too much, my parents will take care of Sophie. Alice, I can do the housework after I come home from work. So you can just sleep as much as you need. Are you sure, John? Oh, I feel guilty. You don't need to feel guilty. It's the job of both parents to take care of the child. Your body's weakened from the childbirth. You should focus on recovering. I'll make sure I get home early and help you out. Thank you. I'm so glad I married you, John. Alice, this is nothing. I just want to make sure you and Sophie are okay. You love Sophie so much, don't you? But she's so cute. Butter wouldn't melt in her mouth. <laughs> See, I told you. <laughs> Sophie is very lucky. Her dad treats her so well. Really? Isn't this normal? I don't think many parents would do this much. You have work, too. On that note, after we get through this busy period at work, I might be able to get paternity leave. Really? Didn't you say they wanted you to delay it because they needed more people? The two new people who started two months ago are very good. I think they'll be fine without me. I asked Ewan, and he said I should be able to take the time off. That's great. I'll be very happy. It'll be so nice to have you around the house. Right? We'll get through this busy period soon. So you only have to wait a little longer. I'm looking forward to it. We'll have a great time together.
John, I'm sorry. I need you to do something for me. What's wrong, Alice? You sound serious. Something happened? I've been feeling nauseous from this morning. So I went to the hospital. Oh no, are you okay? Is this food poisoning or something? No. They examined me and found a brain tumor. I have one year to live. What? You can't be serious. I wouldn't joke about something like this. Well, but... Isn't it all a bit too sudden? You've been going to the hospital all these times, but they're only noticing this now? I'll tell you the details when you come home, John. But I just thought I was feeling unwell because of the childbirth. So the doctor didn't run any brain scans until now. Nobody thought that I'd have cancer at such a late stage. Oh, is that how this works? What's with that reaction? Are you saying that I'm lying? I was told I don't have much time. I even have the diagnosis papers. Why don't you believe me? I'm sorry, I'm not accusing you, Alice. I'm just having a tough time coming to terms with this because it's so sudden. I'm the one who's really struggling. I thought after giving birth to Sophie we could have a happy life together. But I won't be able to see her grow up. This couldn't be any worse. You're right. You're the one that's really going through the most. I'm sorry I said something so insensitive. What should I do from now? What can I do to help you, Alice? I thought about it. About what I can do for my family. So that's why I said, there's something I want you to do for me. What is it? I'll do anything, Alice. I want to get a divorce. Huh? Divorce? Why? I think my body is just going to wither away from now on. I don't want you to see me get weaker and weaker. I want you to remember the healthy me, John. No, I can't do that to you. Let me support you, Alice. You've got Sophie to take care of, John. You shouldn't be wasting time on me. What are you saying? I'll look after both you and Sophie. My parents will take care of Sophie sometimes. I don't want to cause trouble for everyone. Please, forget about me and enjoy the next stage of your life. I'm sure you won't have any trouble finding a lovely new wife, John. Please? Don't just decide all this on your own. I can't leave you while you're ill, and I can't get remarried so quickly. Of course I can't just throw you away like that. Please, it's my dying wish to you. Please think of this like what I left to you in my will. I can't. Even if that's what you want, Alice, I can't agree to this. I'm sorry to be so selfish. I only had a short time with her, but I was so glad to have Sophie. I know you don't want this, John, but my mind is decided. I'll move out of our house soon. Just take good care of Sophie. I just got to the airport now. This is the last time I'll contact you. I'm sorry. I just think you'll be happier without me. Yep, thanks for everything. <laughs> What's so funny? I had to make a very difficult decision. Why are you being so horrible? Sorry. <laughs> I just couldn't hold it in anymore. <laughs> You're so bad at acting. <laughs> acting? What are you talking about? The cancer is a lie, isn't it? I checked. What do you mean? Why would I lie about that? And I showed you the diagnosis papers. That's pretty solid evidence. Well, the terminal illness in itself wasn't so unbelievable. Sometimes life throws you curveballs. But it's what you said after that. It was just... unnatural. I found what you said suspicious, so I investigated. Investigated? How? 
my coworker's wife happens to work at that hospital as a nurse. I got her to check the diagnosis. But there was nothing on your records to say you were terminally ill. So the papers you showed me must have been forged. How could they have been? It's what my doctor gave me. Yeah, that doctor of yours is pretty suspicious too. What's so suspicious about him? So that's why I researched him too. I found out about him from my coworker's wife and her networks in the hospital. What? You went sniffing around him so much? How embarrassing. You're the embarrassing one. What are you talking about? You don't know, do you? There's a rumor among the nurses that you and your doctor are having an affair. What? When he's examining you, it always takes a long time. Plus, you're often alone together in his room. One nurse even saw you and him together outside of the hospital. Oh, but that's just a rumor. That's just a misunderstanding. Oh, that's why I hate gossipers. Well, I thought you would deny it. I've actually checked your phone secretly. There were loads of evidence from texts to photos with you and your affair partner. I've also been having a private investigator checking you from a while back. A detective? What is this? A soap opera? What are you serious? You were doing all this behind my back. Hey, don't bash the P.I. She's very professional and good at her job. Two days ago, you went with that doctor to a hotel, didn't you? I don't know what you're talking about. I have photos for proof. You realize you can't just talk your way out of this anymore, right? No, you're wrong. I'm not lying. If you were going to lie, you should have made a more convincing one. A terminal illness out of the blue? Followed immediately by a request for a divorce? It was all moving way too fast. But... I'm going to ask you once. Try not to lie to me this time. How long have you been involved in this way with the doctor? Tell me. We met two years ago. And? I thought he was a great guy, so I made him my regular doctor. After I kept seeing him as my doctor, I started to have feelings for him. But around that time, I got pregnant with Sophie. So I... I thought of a way to push the baby onto you and get married to the doctor. So that's why you faked having cancer? Don't you feel guilty for abandoning your newborn child? Didn't you think about us after you left us? I didn't think about that. I was just going to pretend you didn't exist after that. Are you serious? Can't believe how cold you would be to us. But... That's how much I love him. Whatever. I don't have any feelings for someone who would abandon us in such a calculating way. Let's just divorce and be done with it. But I'll be suing you for emotional damages, and you'll be paying me child support. Why would I pay you child support? <laughs> it's fathers who pay child support. What are you talking about? Child support is what the parent with custody gets. Gender doesn't matter. Really? Of course. Isn't it obvious? But I didn't know that. You didn't even know that. Oh, whatever. I'm too tired to be angry or surprised anymore. But just know that I'll be getting that money. Fine, do what you want. I'm going to be marrying a doctor. On his salary, the lawsuit and the child support won't even matter. I wonder if it'll be so simple. Life doesn't always go so smoothly. Are you jealous, John? That's why you're saying such horrible things. You're calling me horrible? After all you did? After you tell us such a stupid lie and try to abandon us? I just thought you'd be hurt if I told you the truth. That's why... I did you a kindness. What kindness? 
What you did isn't called kindness. Your morals are way off. Uh, enough. Anyway, I'm leaving you. That's why I tried to show you one last kindness. John, help me. I'm sorry for everything I did. Please, forgive me. What is it? It's late. I thought I could finally sleep now that Sophie's sleeping. I apologize for everything I've done. So can you call off the lawsuit? Huh? Why? I don't want to. I don't have the money. You're getting married to that doctor, right? Yesterday, you said you don't care what I did, right? <laughs> it won't even matter on his salary, you said. <laughs> but we're not getting married now. Oh? Why's that? Didn't you leave me to get married to him? The hospitals found out about the forged diagnosis papers. So he said that we need to stop the affair so he can keep his job. Oh no, poor you. I guess he left you. He hasn't left me. I pulled back to save his career. Nope, sounds to me like he ditched you. <laughs> no, that's not it. Anyway, I've got no money, so I won't be able to afford the lawsuit and the child support. So please, back down. Nope. Why? Raising a child as a single parent is tough. The more money I have, the better. Don't think I'll let you get off for free after cheating on me and abandoning us. Then I've got an idea. Let's forget about the divorce. Come again? Then it'll be back to normal for us. If I help with raising the baby, you won't need child support. Come on, quit joking. You can't just come back from what you did. I won't even let you into the house. Why not? Aren't you struggling with me gone? It's better for Sophie if her mother is around. It's bad for her to be raised by a single parent. I'm sure she'll be miserable with just her dad raising her. I'm sure it'll be tough. But it's 100 times better than having an irresponsible mother like you around. I was doing most of the housework before the divorce anyway. Our lives won't really change all that much when you're gone. That's not true. While you were at work, I looked after Sophie and did all of the housework. To phrase it another way, I did everything when I was at home. And my parents were looking after Sophie most of the time. You were just sleeping. I did all the cleaning, laundry, and the cooking, too. I couldn't help it. I was unwell. Ugh. Knowing what I know now, you feeling ill back then is pretty suspect. I bet you were making that up so you could go see your affair partner. That wasn't a lie. I really was unwell. No, I can't trust you. I'm not sure I can trust anything about you. Not that it matters now anyway. Either way, you being around isn't really going to lighten my load. Look, just give me one more chance. I'll show you that I've changed, and I'll be a good mother. I promise. I don't care about you anymore. Like you said to me, Alice, I should just forget about you and enjoy the next stage of my life. Goodbye. Don't ignore me. How can you have this attitude towards your wife when she's in trouble? It's just karma for what you tried to do to us. Don't you try to play the victim. I'll forget about you. I won't tell Sophie about you. It'll be better for her that way. After that, as I thought, Alice's affair partner left her. Looks like he abandoned Alice to save his own skin. But there was no way he could keep the affair and forged paper secret, so he was fired anyway. 
I decided to kick him while he was down, so I sued him for a large sum of money for emotional damages. I didn't think it was fair for just the affair partner to get away. Alice was left all alone. She didn't have a job or any money, so she went crying to her parents. But her parents heard from me about what she did, so they turned her away. Alice went to all her friends and relatives begging for money, but nobody wanted to know. Seems like everyone ignored her. I can't help but feel like it was karma at play. I'm raising Sophie as a single parent now, with the support of my parents. Life is full of struggles, but seeing Sophie's face gives me strength. I can't believe Alice would abandon such an adorable baby. I want to raise her with enough love for two parents.